Um, Alistair, how do you reflect on the Champions League experience as a whole now that obviously your fate is sealed? Yeah, uh, of course, um, disappointing um, for sure. Um, but at the same time, it's the, the campaign isn't over yet. We still have another match, um, another home match as well, which is always exciting. Obviously, we would have loved to have gone into that match with something to play for. Um, so it's frustrating in that aspect. And, and looking back on it as a whole, I think that there were some matches that we performed really well. I think there's other ones that we kind of let drift by us a little bit, um, kind of specifically that last one. It just felt like... You know, we were kind of drifting in the game a little bit. It was nil-nil in the 80th, but we hadn't really laid a, you know, laid a punch yet. And, and that's kind of a frustrating one is it felt like we kind of wasted 90 minutes there where, you know, uh, you know, a team like us, we want to not only get results, but we also want to show everyone that we belong and that we can play at this level. And that, you know, if a neutral comes away from that game, they go and say, wow, Celtic, you know what, even if they didn't get the results that's a team that can play real football. Um, that's a team that excites. That's a team that, you know, puts on a show. And I don't think that we really did that at Lazio. I don't think we ever really got out of first gear. We were a little cagey and a little defensive, um, just in our approach, lacking a little bit of intensity. Um, and you can make an argument that, you know, that's maybe been a little bit of an overarching theme of the entire uh, campaign for us. But I think there's been some matches where we've gone toe-to-toe -to -toe and you could see how engaged the crowd gets and, and how engaged everyone gets with it. Um, so we... You know, at the same time, though, is that you'd love to come out of there with a couple more results, a couple more points. Um, it is what it is at this point. Um, you know, the campaign's not done. We still have another chance to kind of finish on a high note, which is what we're going to be aiming to do. We have Feyenoord at home. Um, so we're excited for that challenge. Um, but right now, again, you know, it's it's a busy, busy Christmas period. Um, it's a match pretty much every three days, it feels like. So we've got to focus on, on the league. And, and we know that the best way and the only way potentially to get back into the Champions League next year is to win the league. So that's kind of where our main focus is now. But again, we still have our eye on that Feyenoord match and looking forward to another, you know, good opportunity to go out there and show the world what we're all about. The manager admitted that some quality will need added to, to make that next step. But I just wonder from the players' point of view, how close do you feel you are before it's not just competing in that level, but it's getting results and it's moving further into the competition? How close do you think this club are to achieving that? No, it's, it's a great question. Um, I think that every year, you know, those players build experience in that competition. Yeah, I think, you again, you look at our team not only the average age, but probably the average number of appearances in the Champions League compared to most is probably on the lower side, but we're not going to use that as an excuse, and we want to use that kind of going into next year as like, okay, how can we build on that? And I think that we saw a little bit of that. It's a little bit almost naivety and a little bit of an experience in certain moments where, yeah, you're getting a second yellow when you shouldn't, or you're just... You know, you're conceding a counterattack when you just really can't right there. There needed to be a tactical foul or just something along those lines. I think that we were a little naive to it. Um, and again, that's something that each of us need to learn and, and kind of you know, look in the mirror and grow. Um, and I think that we will. Um, of course, yeah, we'd love to have more quality in the squad. Um, yeah, I'd love to turn into Danny Alves overnight, but, you know, you have to work with what you're given. Um, so at the same time as we understand that, that no matter what 11 players are out on the pitch, we feel like we got to be able to feel like we can go and get a result. And I think that we showed that, you know, some of the matches, especially that athletic one at, at home, we went toe to toe with them. Um, I think that's the one that obviously stands out. But those kind of matches, you need to find a way to win, you know, when you're on top and you have the crowd behind you. Um, that's where that little bit of experience um, really needs to kick in. And, and again, that's kind of one of those moments I'm talking about where there's a tactical foul. There's just a little moment of brilliance. We just need something that puts us over the edge to win those games. And, and again, that's why it's the most difficult competition in the world for, for a reason, the club competition in the world. Um, so we understand it's, it's the Champions League. It's not supposed to be easy. But at the same time, is that we do feel like we have enough to be able to grind out some results there. And again, hopefully we'll be in it next year so that we can uh, we can show that we've made some steps. I think there's maybe an, an overreaction sometimes when results go against you and you know you, you are out of the competition before a game to go and there's, there's stats flying around about you know how many times, how many games there are without a win and stuff like that. Does that cut through to you guys? Or does that just seem as a bit of a, an overreaction and you know continue with the, the growth that you guys can see and feel amongst yourself? Yeah, I, I don't think we really let that kind of stuff get to us again. As I was saying, when it's such a busy calendar, football calendar, there's just a match every three days. If you get hung up on stuff that's happened years ago, for example, when a lot of players weren't even here and, you know, it's a whole different potential coaching staff and everything, 
it can get just overwhelming, I think, if you get caught up in all of that. So we do a really good job on just kind of focusing on the day-to-day. Um, again, I, I think if you get caught too much on that, you'll it'll affect your performance not only in matches but in training. And again, we have such a deep squad and such a talented squad that if you're not on it every day, that you're going to get replaced in the starting 11. And that's what you want in one of these kind of top clubs is that you need that competition throughout. So again, I think that if you let your mentality shift to something like that where you get too caught up in you know, this big, big, big picture um, – you'll get lost in it. And I think that I, I bet that on social media and stuff like that, a lot of people do get lost in it. Um, again, we do a pretty good job of staying off that and, and just, you know, keeping our minds and our heads in this facility, um, within the group. And, and again, it comes down to having good leadership and we have that, this club, which we're really lucky with, um, that kind of keep everything, you know, steady. And again, just one foot forward and one step after another. So we're lucky in that regard. Um, but yeah, I can imagine that online there's quite a bit going on, but yeah, we don't get too caught up in it. So you mentioned there's kind of lessons you've learned, maybe kind of experience that were streetwise. Do you, do you spend longer you know, analyzing these Champions League games or, or thinking about the lessons that you learned because it is a high level when you used to school? Yeah, no, for sure. Like, generally kind of the individual clips that we'll do after a match that we'll do with our coaching staff um, will be a lot longer and again that's probably my favorite part about playing at this level is that it's not like it's a chore for players to do that players want to learn players want to we're all at this level for a reason we're all super competitive um, and we also want to see what does it take to get to that next level and when you're playing against that next top level when you're playing against guys like Antoine Griezmann you know I like going back and watching the entire match and breaking down okay what makes this guy so good and again, when you see the movements and just the tactical awareness and the cleanliness of the touch and everything like that, it really gives you an understanding of, okay, yeah, that's what makes that player earn that much a year and play at that club. And, you know, he's won, a, he's won the World Cup. You know, he's done stuff like that. It really kind of puts things in perspective. But at the same time is that we like breaking that stuff down and seeing, okay, what's different about, you know, these kind of matches than when we play domestically. Oftentimes when we play domestically, we're playing against a much lower block, a much more consistent 5-4-1, for example, where it's about breaking down tight spaces. You're going to have a ton of the ball, 75% of the possession probably. And it's about, okay, how can you find, you know, the key to unlock that versus in, in Europe, you're getting a completely different beast, whether it's home or away, um, a lot more, um, you know, just players all over the pitch that can do that, that can pick a lock, um, can get out of tight situations. And as a defender, it's a completely different game when from playing with 75% of the ball to playing against guys where, you know what, you got to expect always worst case scenario that, you know what, he might turn, he might get turned in the midfield. And then what happens if he's facing forward, if Luis Alberto is facing forward compared to, you know, the average player in the pre- uh, the Scottish Premiership is a bit different. You know, there's balls getting played over your head and And I think like that, it can be really difficult to just flip that switch going from domestic to Champions League and back. And I think that's a really good thing that I think a lot of us have learned is that, you know, you need to play at that level at all times. Otherwise, it's going to be really difficult when it comes to those big matches. You just think you're going to turn it on and be like, oh, no, I know now. Yeah, I got to be really aware for that ball in behind. But no, you need to have that kind of awareness week in, week out. Um, and I think that we do a really good job of that, but at the same time as, yeah, when you dive into the clips, it's those little tiny moments. It's, it's, everything's just a half a second quicker. And if you're just half a second late to react, everyone at this level is just unbelievably clinical. They'll punish you. Um, and we've seen that in all of our matches. And, and I know a lot of people might say that, you know, we've gotten unlucky. Um, but at the same time is that you create your own luck and when they have that much quality, um, and they have that much just ruthlessness, I'd say, in the final third. Um, we felt it. It's just like if you make one little mistake, which normally you can maybe would get away with, you don't get away with it at that level. Uh, and I think that's been the biggest learning curve for us is that if you just take one moment where you're asleep or just take it for granted and kind of just go and, and coast just for a second, you're going to get punished at that level. So I think that a lot of us can can take from that, especially defensively, um, us defenders, um, what it means to play at that next level and what it's going to take to, you know, make that next step. And so we can start keeping clean sheets at, in the Champions League level. How do you show your own personal fitness? Is another you, you missed a bit at the end of last season, you missed a bit at the start of this season, and the rest of the few times in the game. Do you feel you 100%? Yeah, I'm getting there. Um, it was difficult missing out in a full preseason. Um, of course, when you get one of those under your belt, it definitely helps. You, you can feel, especially when it comes to this kind of time of the year, um, that you're really kind of kicking into that next gear. 
but no, the whole coaching staff has been really good with me, understanding what's going on with my ankle, um, coming off an ankle surgery. And it hasn't been as, you know, smooth as I would have liked. I was hoping it was going to be just a smooth operation and, and I'd be feeling 100%. But no, there's definitely some setbacks and still some things that I'm feeling. And they're getting me through that. And of course, when you add in international football and you're adding in all that travel and you go from playing on a pitch like this to an Astro pitch, then down to Jamaica and you're playing on a, a swampy pitch, you know, a lot of those kind of things um, add up, including the travel. And, you know, they're not necessarily easy on my body or on my ankle, but they've done a really good job with managing me in that way. Um, and again, we're lucky that we have a really deep squad where it doesn't matter who's playing at fullback or whatever position. Um, we have enough quality that we feel like we can go and get a result. Um, but yeah, no, you're right. I would ideally be feeling in a bit better place than I am, but I do feel like I'm starting to turn that corner now um, and hopefully, you know, get through this run of games in a good feeling and get through the January break and then really kick on from there. This weekend, then, how important is it to get back to the boys up with St. Johnson? Yeah, I think that it's it's similar to to how we felt right before the international window when you know we went to Atletico and obviously had a really difficult match there. And I think Aberdeen kind of felt the the force of that. Um, so it's going to be a similar kind of mentality and feeling for us is that coming out of the gate strong, um, let them know that yeah that that performance in Lazio doesn't define us um, and that we have more to show. And I think that that's something that we really need to take into it. Again, really difficult ground to go play at. Um, not an easy team either. Um, physical, strong, can defend their blocks really well and also pose a threat. Um, so I think that we just need to make sure that we come out of the blocks hot. Um, and if we do that, I think that we have the quality um, that we can get the result that we need. Um, but yeah, it's really important mentally to, to get a good bounce back performance from that. You weren't one of the lucky ones that got to meet. I wasn't one of the lucky ones, no, unfortunately not. But no, it sounded like it was a surreal experience for the guys who, who managed to, to get invited um, and one that I, I bet they'll be telling their grandchildren. Yeah, it's not something, not too often, you get to meet the Pope, so that would be a pretty good one for a little, little icebreaker, two truths and a lie. I met the Pope, I don't think anyone's going to guess that that's the truth, so yeah, it's pretty cool.